go ahead and get started. We have, we have some people joining. I'm going to run through. We'll try not to talk too much. And then if you guys have any questions, you can, Anjali's going to be the moderator and keep me in line. Um, <laughs> so you can submit questions and Anjali's going to mm -hmm. be reading them and she may interrupt and say, we're going to answer this question now, or we may just wait till the end. Um, yep. So again, thank you all. For, There's for a chat for a feature down at the bottom so yes. that you can, you can go ahead and chat and share it with the entire group or there's a Q&A button where it would come directly to us. Yes. Okay. And Anjali will be in charge of that. Um, so let's hope we can get through this. Okay. Here we go, everybody. So over the past three months, basically everything has come to a standstill, as you know. Um, you know, this started, I know I came off a cruise. Um, March 9th, I'll never forget it. And by the end of that week, basically everything was shut down. The kids were being told they were going to be out of school. So literally in the span of five days, it went from everything seemed maybe like it was going to be okay to no, it's not going to be okay. Um, so now we're starting to see the opposite where things are slowly starting to open back up. Um, and there's a lot of information out there, and we thought the best way to do this was to, to have a Zoom call, have a webinar, talk about reopening, what, what the resorts are doing, what the countries are doing, um, and answer questions that you all have for maybe future travel at the end of this year or into 2021. Um, so real quick, oh, there's us. That was um, uh, pre-COVID, better times when we could actually go. This was an event in Mexico um, where we, uh, awards event, where we had a nice pre-day where we could relax a bit. So hopefully we'll be getting back to the pool uh, in Mexico yes. soon. Um, so anyway, fun, fun picture of us. We miss, we miss going on these tours. Obviously for us, it's, it's exciting to get to paradise and um, it's work, but it's also fun at the same time. So. Um, and here is our lovely team of ladies. We just, uh, you know, I see a lot of familiar names out there, but for those of you um, that haven't worked with us before, this is our great group of ladies here. Um, and I don't know if you can see, obviously that's me and Anjali. And then we have Joe here, who is our Disney specialist, our Disney guru. And she's been up to her ears and dealing with, um, all sorts of uh, all sorts of stuff with Disney and their reopening plans. And then we also had Laura who joined us. Um, was it the beginning of this year? Maybe the end of end of la no end of last year. And she is our Disney specialist number two because we get so many requests for Disney people. Obviously, I mean Disney. There's always a demand for Disney, um, and it was just too much for me to to do myself. Um, and Disney has so many components to it that we we really needed a specialist to handle to handle Disney. So we've got two great ladies who um, will handle Disney. So even if you reach out to myself or Anjali, we all work as a team. Um, so you can always reach out to us, and then we'll make the introduction to Joe or Laura for you. Um, so and they're hosting a whole bunch of webinars. They've been. Um, hosting that weekly and they have two more coming up in the next two weeks and then we have Ellen who I she is our like marketing guru we love her Anjali yes. luckily uh, found her yes. found her and now I'm like I can't live without her so unfortunately Ellen gets multiple texts every day she put together this beautiful presentation for me and she handles most of our our marketing uh, for the whole group. So I'm sure she uh, rused the day she met me at the bus stop that day. I'm, I'm sure. sure. Her, her I'm sure she says her, all kinds of things about that. Her phone was very quiet until she, uh, and I, <laughs> I, I managed to rope her in by saying, oh, you'll only work a few hours a week. And that <laughs> into basically a full-time job for the poor woman. But she does such a great job and we're, we're fortunate to have her and then our latest addition is Meredith, and she joined, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe six months ago, and she helps me on the back end because we do so many groups now, whether it's destination weddings or corporate groups, um, 
you know, where we're talking 30 to, to 50 rooms at a time. And so Meredith helps me with getting all those rooms booked, coordinating transfers, uh, transportation to and from the, 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 the hotel, um, and flight schedules, all that good stuff. So that's our team. Um, we have been extremely busy over the past three months, which sounds crazy because nobody's traveling. But, um, you know, when this hit for us, we were coming up on spring break travel, which is obviously a very busy time for us. Um, and it was very stressful. I have to say the month, month of March and into April was really, really hard for us. And, and I know Anjali, uh, I, I remember her texting me a picture of her on two different phones and we're talking hours on the phone. Like yes. she's trying to, to cook dinner and just has her cell phone, a, a landline, going at the same time on hold for hours. So uh, Anjali, you, you know, we, we, we definitely have been extremely busy. Um, I know Anjali's done some, had to do some rebookings, uh, cancellations, that sort of thing. Um, but we've had a lot of success stories. Anjali, all of your clients mm -hmm. have been able to essentially recoup their money, correct? Correct. We were able to get uh, the money back. We were able to, in some cases, rebook. Uh, some were just not comfortable going, obviously, in March and April, or it was completely canceled. Right. Um, but for most part, I was able to get everyone's money back, regardless of the supplier we used, regardless of whatever situation, whether it was refundable, non-refundable. So we've been very lucky that um, I was able to get that for them. And they weren't the ones sitting on hold with three different phones going on. Yeah. I think for us, and I, and I hope for, for people out there that maybe have used an online company before, um, they see the value now in having an agent because it's not costing them any more money. And we basically took care of everything for them. Um, right. So we do have a lot of success stories. I, I, you know, one, for example, I still have a family scheduled to leave in 10 days for Italy and we are literally holding their flights because the flights are still scheduled and we're waiting 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 to see if we can get them canceled so we can get a full refund versus a voucher for them um, and so that's what we do it's our job and we're we're managing these situations and there's been many cases where clients have come to us and said we want to cancel we want to cancel right now and we've been able to talk them out of that and say we still have time let us hold it. We're going to watch it. We think if the cruise line cancels it, we're going to be able to get a refund or extra onboard credits. Um, if the airline cancels it, we'll be able to get your money back. So again, there, there has, I, hopefully I know our clients have seen um, our value and hopefully people that have booked trips on their own before now, or maybe the next time around we'll go, you know what, I'm gonna leave this to, to a professional to handle it. Um, so that's what we've been doing over the, uh, the past three months. It has been really, really busy for us, um, but we're excited about what's coming. So basically the last, um, I don't know, week, 10 days, things are slowly starting to open up in the Caribbean. Um, and I wanna make this clear because I, I've had some conversations with, with some potential clients where they, they're kind of concerned to go to these islands, but what I've explained to them is the islands actually shut down their borders immediately because they don't have the infrastructure. If, if they were dealing with COVID, like we're dealing with COVID, it would be a disaster. So they made the right choices and shut their borders down right away. Um, and because of that, there's very few cases um, on these islands. There's very, very few. They've really been able to contain it well. And so it's actually the opposite. They don't want us there. Um, they really don't. So they're slowly opening things. And in some cases, they're only opening it to certain countries. I've seen where the European countries, some of them, because they dealt with COVID before we did, they're allowing the European um, guests to come in sooner than the USA guests. So uh, it's- I wanted to jump in real quick. Um, yeah. It's also the same, I know we're on the Caribbean, but it's also the same within Europe. For example, Iceland. Iceland right now is completely closed to everybody except EU residents. Mm -hmm. Starting July 1st, 
Iceland is opening to the U.S. Yeah. Um, they're still monitoring the number of uh, cases, so I'm sure that at any time it starts rising, it'll shut back down. However, it's open right now, so people have been going as of June 15th to Iceland that are not U.S. citizens. So it's a fluid situation across the country, uh, across the world. Yeah, yeah, and that's our job to to manage these situations and 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 manage these dates. Um, I'm going to give an example in a minute of something that came up today. Um, but I wanted to kind of go through this slide. I thought this was a great slide for, for showing some of the, the different islands, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, they're, they're getting ready to open. Mexico opened last week. We got to see some great videos of the resorts reopening. And I mean, the, the, the first guests literally coming up, up the drive and the, all the staff, of course, in masks out there welcoming them. The staff, the, everybody is so excited to see people back again. And the good thing is if you can get a flight there, the hotels are maybe at 20% occupancy. So talk about social distancing. You basically have the pool to yourself. You have these restaurants to yourself. It's really a, a great time to, to visit if you can get a flight there. Um, and I'm gonna touch on that, but, but some of the main islands that you know, we're, we're dealing with on a daily basis, obviously Jamaica, they're, um, and this is the resorts. So the majority, and, and again, I'll touch on this, are gonna open mid-July. Dom Dominican Republic is still sort of iffy. I saw something out there. I believe they're opening at the end of July, um, but some resorts are opening and some are not. So I I'm gonna talk about that. Turks and Caicos the Island itself is opening June 22nd, Aruba, uh, July, and this is to U.S. citizens. So again, another example of where Aruba is opening earlier, um, but not to U.S. citizens until July. So just a couple dates. You can see Grand Cayman really is keeping everybody out until September. Um, St. Lucia has been open, but there are major, major, you got to, you know, you have to basically get a COVID test um, showing negative within 48 hours of your flight there. Um, so I'm going to give one example of, of a situation that happened today. So again, just because you see that something's open, this is where we are having to, to really look at every single component. So for example, I have a group of guys looking um, to travel in August for a bachelor party and um, or bachelor getaway, and they're looking at mid-August and we were trying to figure out best spot. They want a casino. We ended up at the long story short, we ended up with the Bahamas, pretty quick flight from the East Coast. Um, and so I, of course, am looking at the Bahamas reopening border date, which is July 1st. So I'm like, okay, we're good there. The borders are open. I pulled air, the air schedule looked fantastic. And so I thought, okay, we're good to go. And I went online today to the property. And of course we can't manage every single property and know every date for every property. I went online to start looking at room categories for these guys and they're shut down until August, I'm, I'm sorry, October 1st. So here's a situation where I thought the country was fine, the air, there's American Airlines flights going there, but this particular property has chosen to just shut down until October. Um, so now all those plans are scratched. So again, Anjali and I and, and some of the other team members, we're having to look at every single component. You can't just assume that because the island's open, all the resorts are going to be open. Um, and I wanted to just add, it's also changing daily. Yeah. So yeah. if one day, we, you know, we were able to say, hey, yes, it's open, within a week, it could be shut down or vice versa. So it's definitely a fluid situation um, yeah. every day. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot for us. It's a lot for us to manage. And again, we're on webinars. We are getting notifications, multiple notifications daily on different uh, property brands, that sort of thing of when they're scheduled to reopen. I did want to show this real quick, this U.S. Embassy link, and hopefully I can get back to the presentation easily. So this is a great link um, where this, is, this has all the Caribbean islands here. And again, I wanted to just highlight, for example, with St. Lucia, um, while they are open, uh, they started phase one, June 4th, while they are open, 
Um, you'll see that visitors are required to pre present certified proof of a negative COVID test within 48 hours of boarding their flight. So that's not always the, e you know, the easiest situation. You know, you're going to have to figure out, can you get a test uh, prior to getting on your flight? And how do you get that negative result? Is it right away? So again, the, the, these islands are opening in phases. Some are a bit more lenient than others. In this case, St. Lucia is being really strict about it. Um, so, you know, these are all the things that we have to take into account when we're helping people for travel, especially in the near future. Um, you know, meaning August, September, October, we're looking at all of this. Okay, moving on. So, and this, this one is, this slide, um, hopefully it's not too blurry. This is, this is just one of the infographics that, that I was on the uh, Jamaican Tourist Board um, webinar last week or the week before, and they sort of went through the airport protocols. Um, and so again, masks are absolutely required. I'm sure everybody knows that as far as air travel, um, airlines are, are keeping the middle seat unoccupied. Um, so you have your, your airline situation, which is fine. Then you're going to land. You're going to do temperature screenings. Um, for example, here in Jamaica, they're just going to do a thermal scan, do a quick test on you. Um, they did give an example. You know, if you if somebody in your party has an elevated temperature, you're then going to be taken to an independent room where you're going to be allowed to cool down for a minute. Maybe it's just, you know, getting off the plane or you're now in the Caribbean, you're hot. So, and then they'll do a second test. And then at that point, if you still have a temperature, um, they're going to probably send you back. And some of the questions that came up were, is it just going to be you if you're traveling with your family or is the whole family going to go back? And again, that when we were on the call, this was all sort of new um, info. So as we get this information, we're going to just continue to, to update people. Um, but that's an example of, of what airports are doing. Um, and we did have, there was a, a, an agent, uh, we, were, we were part of a, obviously an agent forum, and there was an agent that traveled to Antigua this week, and she did, or last week, and she put together a fantastic step-by-step -step at the airport. And she said, other than at the collecting baggage, um, she said there was not, you know, that's where you have to watch with social distancing. There was an issue with that because everybody wants to grab their bag. Um, right. So we that were, was... Quick yeah. question that came in um, uh, along that line. Um, are masks required to be worn throughout your stay at the resort? No. And so I was going to say no as well. Um, it is required when you obviously are getting to the airport, getting through the airport in the taxi ride. But once you're at the resort, um, the, the pictures that we have seen, the guests are not wearing masks. No. And there, you know, what, what's being encouraged, and we're going to get to the hotel next, um, right after this. So I'll, I'll hold that and I'll, I'll expand on that when we get to the hotel portion. This is just essentially touching on um, airport arrival, what they're doing as far as temperature checks, social distancing. So, you know, I thought the luggage, gathering of the luggage, that was an interesting perspective. Again, this agent just traveled herself and she took very detailed notes on what she witnessed. She said, other than that, things were fantastic in the airport. Um, and again, you know, not that many people are traveling. So the, the airport's not going to be at full occupancy anyway. So other than gathering baggage, things were, were, were pretty good on that front. Um, the, the transfer vehicles are being sanitized, obviously, prior to you entering them. So they're, they're, they're taking it very, very seriously in these islands. They, re they really are doing a great job with their protocols. Um, so here we are. Now we've made it through the airport, through, gotten in your, your transfer. You're now at the hotel. Um, and so here's where they're going to want you to, it would be nice to have your masks during check-in. They, they're basically saying common areas, um, you know, just, just at the lobby check-in. Um, but other than that, 
No, they are not requiring you to wear masks for the majority of the resorts. We obviously cannot speak to every resort out there. There's many, many boutique resorts um, that like I was on a call for, I can't remember, uh, it might have been Antigua, where it was a, a general manager speaking to their resort and they're, they're a small boutique property. Um, they're not even doing lobby check-ins. You literally are coming out of the transfer, somebody's meeting you outside, a representative, and you are being taken directly to your room to complete the check-in process there. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Now for, for these large resorts, can they do that? No, that's just not gonna work. But for some of the smaller hotels, um, that's one way they're bypassing even dealing with the lobby to begin with. Um, so some of the safety protocols, and I'm gonna click on these links in a minute, but Buffets have either been done away with or reimagined. For example, you may not be able to pick up the utensils to serve yourself. There may be the employees that are serving you. So yes, maybe there's buffet stations, but you're not able to get the food yourself. Um, you just have one employee with gloves and a mask giving you the food. Gyms are not open as far as a free for all. You can't just go in there now. That requires a, a you know a reservation ahead of time, a time slot for you to go in there. Um, one thing I thought was was pretty neat, and again, when they were speaking to it at the boutique hotel, but a lot of these other resorts are doing it, is that once housekeeping has cleaned a room, and again, they're cleaning it now to a whole nother standard than they were before. They are literally putting some sort of seal on that door to indicate that they have cleaned that room and sanitized it and no one else has entered that. So you as the guest will break that seal to go into your room and they are spraying down all the luggage. So all the luggage is being sprayed down. So before it even gets in your room, that's being sprayed down. Um, spacing of lounge chairs at the pool, you're not gonna find one on top of the other anymore. And again, rigorous cleaning of high touch point traffic areas. They're really trying, like I, I've seen some very detailed notes where they are having employees like every 15 minutes, they have to clean these certain areas of the resort, any high touch point. Um, so <clears throat> again, there, it, each, each resort is a bit different, but they're all taking it extremely seriously. All the employees will have masks. So yes, the, the employees will all have masks, but they are not requiring guests to have masks unless it's, again, lobby area or an area where there's gonna be a lot of people congregating, then you know, they're going to, if they don't enforce it, they're gonna highly recommend that you be doing it. Um, um, we have another question that's come in. Um, the question is, uh, what about spas and saunas? And um, from some of the webinars that I have been on, some of them have been closed mm -hmm. so that they are not even offering that. Other ones like Hard Rock are um, uh, limited appointments and you have to schedule it in advance. You can't walk in anymore and just say, oh, is there an opening? Yep. So okay. it just depends on the resort. So some of them are closed, but some of them have limited availability or you need a, an appointment ahead of time. For okay. saunas, um, the spa, any steam room, most of those steam rooms and saunas are closed. Mm -hmm. However, the spa services, massage, facials, things like that. Yeah. Um, you have to check uh, resort by each resort. Yes. Yes. Because I did see on, and I can't remember the resort brand, but they're allowing like manicures, pedicures, but again, they're not allowing some of those other services. So again, it's every resort is doing it a bit different. That's a great question. Um, so, you know, again, we'll, we, are up to date on most resorts and what they're doing. So certainly you can ask us um, if you're looking at making, you know, you're gonna proceed with looking at um, a trip in the next few months, we can give you that information. So I just wanted to touch really quick, obviously everybody knows Sandals and Beaches, um, that's a popular brand. So I just wanted to go through real quick what they have on their website. So you can see um, our 18 touch point practice. And again, I'm not gonna run through all this, but again, elevators on here, fitness rooms. These are areas that are getting a major, major cleaning and on a like scheduled employee, like assigned to, to be doing this um, 
on a, you know, a, a very scheduled, like I, I saw every 15 minutes. Um, and then talking about what they're doing in the uh, rooms for the extra cleaning. Um, and they're using like here, they're using a U, UV LED light. I mean, I love that. We've all seen like the Dateline where you have the, the UV light. So I think this is yes. great. I hope this <laughs> stuff continues forever. I mean, then, well, then we don't have to carry our Lysol with us right. all the time. So again, uh, you know, I'm not going to go through all this, but, but what they're doing um, to make sure uh, this, you know, the things are, are cleaned and, and um, guests feel comfortable and they feel comfortable about choosing to travel. And real quick, I'll go to Playa Resorts is another brand that we love, um, that we have a lot of guests that um, we send to their resorts. And I thought they had some interesting um, things here. So we've all seen the plexiglass screens now. Um, they have that at the lobby because again, this is a bigger resort. So they can't do the personal take you right to your room. You're gonna have to still go to the lobby. Um, but under like eating and drinking, uh, this is where, again, redesigned approach to buffet um, that includes sealed and protective barriers. Uh, we've got bars and lounges sanitized twice an hour. Take out one thing I did. They're now they're now they're calling it enhanced because before when you went to an all inclusive, you either sat in the restaurant. I mean, yes, you maybe took some food with you, uh, but but not normally. They didn't normally have takeout service. You you would go into the restaurant and eat, or you'd order room service. Not let me take my food with me. So um, they've sort of redesigned the way they're thinking. They know people may not be comfortable sitting in a restaurant, so now they're offering this takeout uh, service and room service. I remember being on a conference call with Playa Resorts very early on when I wasn't even thinking about the reopening and, and um, the brand representatives, all I was thinking about is how we manage the reservations we have. They were already talking about what do we need to do to bring guests back here and make them feel comfortable. And one of the main things they said is, um, you know, room service, changing the way that looks. Again, they know people don't want to eat in restaurants all the time. So they've made their menus more robust um, where there's going to be a lot more items offered. And sometimes room service, if you didn't have club level, um, and again, I'm just speaking across the board, a lot of times club level, you have access 24 hours a day. If you were non-club, you didn't have access. They've now expanded their hours because again, they know people may not want to eat at the restaurant. So just about every brand out there has um, things that they're doing to reassure guests that you can come and visit. Um, so I have a couple more questions that came in. Okay. Um, swim up, swim up bars. Uh, question about are swim up bars going to be open? So again, it depends on the resort. Majority of them so far have been closed because it's a, where people are gathering. So at this moment, closed. That may change, obviously, again from resort to resort. And then um, a restaurants such as the Teppanyaki where they're doing the um, sushi and the fried rice and the, the um, where everyone's sitting on the, the big tables, yep. those are closed right now. You can carry out from there. However, they're not doing, uh, opening those restaurants. Great question. Great question. Yeah. Okay. So everything to make guests feel comfortable. Yeah. And this, again, like, like Anjali is saying, I mean, it's changing all the time. And again, the places are just starting to open. So I think they're being very, very cautious. And we love it because, again, we want people to feel comfortable that if you're going to travel, we don't want you to be worried the whole time you're there. It's no use in spending the money if you're going to be freaked out the whole time and can't enjoy yourself. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great question because most all-inclusives have that teppanyaki style table right. with a communal gathering. Um, so great question. Okay, our perspective, thoughts on what we are seeing for summer and fall. Um, so I have seen, I'll, I'll, I'll give my two cents and then Anjali, you, you yep. give your two cents. Um, I still do have 
uh, my, my first client that's scheduled to go is uh, July 23rd to Jamaica. They're all for it. They're ready to get out of here. As long as the flights don't get canceled, they're, they're going. So mid to, to end of July, I am, you know, I still have some um, people that, you know, if things continue to go as they go, and these resorts are being careful, they intend um, on going. Um, August as well, I have some people. As far as new clients, and my fall people, I still, you know, again, it's a wait and see thing. I think, I don't think we, you know, unless they're completely uncomfortable, um, you know, anybody that already had a trip for the fall is, is um, still planning on going. We have a large destination wedding in November um, to Punta Cana. So, you know, continuing on. Um, and as far as I, I will say in the past two weeks, I, I have definitely seen an increase in requests. Um, I have some people looking at a Hawaii cruise uh, next year that they just contacted me two days ago. Um, again, this big bachelor party, they're looking to go in August. So I am definitely, I've, I've booked some Aruba. Um, I definitely have some new trips and I have holiday trips too, because again, a lot of people can't take summer uh, trips, they can't take spring break. And so I, I have a bunch of people um, that have just booked for Christmas time. So um, I've definitely seen an increase. Uh, I, Anjali, what, what's your thoughts there? So I have uh, my, uh, I have clients going to Mexico in July as well, July 24th. Um, I've got Aruba in September. Um, and I've got people that are looking at Iceland, actually. They're, they're new. They're old clients of mine, but they're looking for a new trip. And as soon as she heard about the July 1 date uh, for U.S. citizens, she was, I want to go, like, July 2nd. So we're yeah. still looking at that. Yeah. So there are people that are really ready to go as long as um, they know what to expect. And so as long as I have that information communicated, I think that people are ready to go knowing what they need to do before they get there and then while they're there. Yeah. So yeah, it's coming, it's coming along, and especially for 2021, definitely having a lot more interest for 2021. Yeah. No, I think 2021, if, yeah. if things go well and they get a vaccine or, um, you know, things continue to progress in a positive manner, 2021 is going to be an incredible year. I know for us, just because people want to, to get out of here. Um, and I will say, you know, our job is not to, we, we advise people how we would want to handle our own trips. So for example, I had someone come to me for a honeymoon, this was maybe two weeks ago, to Spain and Portugal. And I did, again, even if the borders are, are open, I did my due diligence and went behind the scenes to some contacts and said, listen, is this really going to, is this really going to happen? Because I don't want to send anybody on a honeymoon um, if this is not going to be a good experience. And they came back and said, we would recommend October. So our job is not to make money and to force people to go on trips. We want to advise them in the right way where they go, okay, they did a good job. They advised us appropriately. If the time's not right, the time's not right. We're not worried about it. We know, you know, you'll come back to us when the time is right. So um, we're certainly not pushing anything. We've hardly done any marketing for anything um, because it's not right. We don't want people to feel we're pushing things. We're just trying to advise as we get the requests that come to us. And Anjali's right. 2021, um, there's a lot of interest there. And, and we'll get to how we're handling new trips um, in just a minute. Future of cruising, obviously the cruise uh, industry has been hit incredibly hard. So, you know, depending on the cruise line, things are still shut down uh, July, August. Some, um, again, for Alaska and Canada, they're essentially closed for the season. Um, Canada, it's not allowing any cruise ships in before October 31st. So at that point, it's like, you know, the season's basically over for any sort of cruise to a fall cruise up to Canada. Um, and Alaska, obviously, it's a very finite window um, of when you can cruise there just because of the temperature. So 
summer months are, ba are basically it. So, you know, Alaska's out. Um, Hawaii, just to touch on that, um, you know, even though we can travel there, uh, they are requiring a two-week stay-in-place uh, quarantine, at least right now through June 30th. That was extended. I believe it was June 15th, and then they extended it maybe last week um, to the 30th. So, and, and hotels are like monitoring it. So if people are going to Hawaii, they're literally stuck in their hotel room um, because the, the hotel workers are like, they're watching um, that people aren't, you're allowed to be in the hotel and the beach, but you basically are not leaving to go anywhere. Um, so at this point, Hawaii travel is not looking good. Um, I do have a, a family traveling mid-August to Hawaii, and we're holding on. They were supposed to go spring break, and we're hoping that this quarantine is lifted, you know, mid-July, early August. They're not scheduled to go till late August, so our hope is they couldn't do it spring break. They're, they're hoping to get their trip in at the very end of summer. Um, so, but as far as the Caribbean cruises, all that, I, I you know, again, we're, we're, we're starting to get, I have one for the Baltics. They're interested in the Baltics next, next May. So again, uh, the cruise industry is gonna, uh, it's gonna take years for them, probably two years to recover. Uh, but there are people out there that um, are ready to get back at it and, and cruise. So that's a little info on cruises. Um, and again, they have their own protocols. Uh, we didn't want to go through all that, but obviously they, uh, they are, have very strict protocols um, with cleanliness and buffets and, and all that good stuff. A um, couple general, general points. Um, you know, one of the other issues we were seeing is that the, obviously with, with everything on lockdown, the passport offices were closed. So if you, you know, were looking at traveling July, August, and you needed to renew your passport, you're in, you know, in big trouble because now they're completely backlogged. They've opened back up with the phase reopening, but they are still um, dealing with emergency situations. And then there's a obviously major backlog for, um, you know, general passport. And what I saw was that any sort of expedited, they, normally they have an expedited service that you can pay extra for. When I looked last, which maybe was, I don't know, five days ago, it just said not available. So they're not expediting. If you're just trying to get a passport renewal or general passport. They're not offering that expedited service at this point. So um, I just wanted to add something. So yeah. uh, my my three kids, their passport had expired because they're young and we had turned in and we were supposed to go to um, Norway in July and they have canceled our flights now. So uh, we are, alas, not heading to Norway. And But <laughs> prior to that, we didn't have the kids' passports ready. So we turned it in in January and basically it, it was taking a long time for them to process, but we thought, okay, by March, we will get them. So they, they don't have those passports. We don't have them yet. So if you are looking to travel and they are, it, it's going to expire, I would turn that in as soon as you can, because right now they have over a million passports sitting in limbo and they process about 8 million passports a year. So if a, a million is already sitting there. I think that um, anybody who needs a passport for next year, it wouldn't be a bad idea to go ahead and just jump start um, and get that passport in because we just don't know how long it's going to take. That's, they processed our check with no problem. That's a but, great. That's a great point. That's a great, great point. Yeah, even if it's travel at the end of this year or next year, do it now. That's yes. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Now I feel like I need to go back to all my groups that are traveling and tell them get on it because you know there's people in the groups that probably don't even know. So okay. right, and I just you know before it gets too late, and even for travel that is going on, say January, February. Yeah, we just don't know how long the passport services will be going on, and if there's any kind of a secondary lockdown. Yeah, then at least if they have our passport, then hopefully it'll start getting processed and we can have new passports for the kids by then, by when yeah. we're ready to go again. Great. Yeah, that's great info. We need to put, we should put that out. Note to self. Next. Yes. 
next <laughs> newsletter. I'm going to add that on there. I think um, that's a note for Ellen. Yeah, note for <laughs> Ellen if she's watching. <laughs> um, so for new reservations, again, we've kind of touched on what we've done um, handling all of our cancels and reschedules as far as new reservations. Obviously now, um, insurance, which for me over the years, I know when I first started, I'm like, oh no, I don't want to sell insurance. I'll sound like I'm like it's a salesperson and I'm trying. And then I started to see where things happened over the years and where I have, I personally have never been so thankful that my clients had insurance. So it is rare that Anjali or I, whatever trip is going on, whether it's Caribbean, uh, I mean, Europe to me is a no brainer. I don't even give people essentially the option. It, it, it I just put it on there immediately. Um, but now obviously insurance, everyone's asking about it where before it was one of those things that nobody wanted to pay for. And it was like, Oh, we got to talk about insurance. Now people are asking for it up front. Um, the main key with that is that, and I've always been, I've always tried to be because I'm not, we are obviously not licensed insurance agents. We are allowed to quote it and offer it to you, but we cannot answer what if scenario questions. So I've always been very, very careful about when people would say, well, what if, what if this happens? What if this happens? I would give them the uh, insurance company's number to call, toll-free number to call prior to purchasing their insurance because I wanted them to hear it directly from them. I'm not allowed to give those answers because I could be liable. So insurance is interesting because again, those people that didn't use a travel agent through all of this, even if they did package on insurance, they assumed, oh, I have insurance, I can get covered for this. And that's not always the case. Um, and in many cases, it's not the case. So there's certain instances with COVID, meaning if you contracted it while you were in destination and needed to go um, to the hospital there, or you needed to get emergency transport back home, then those instances, there's cases where that's covered. But if you just said, I don't want to go because we're scared of going, that's considered a cancel for any reason. Meaning if the resort was still open prior to them shutting down, if your flights were still scheduled and you just didn't want to go, that's considered cancel for any reason. And cancel for any reason is an extra layer of coverage on top of the base coverage. So many times we're offering base coverage and I'll say to somebody, here's the cost for base coverage. If you want cancel for any reason, it's this much more. Um, and some people chose to get it, some people didn't want that, but even with cancel for any reason, the maximum on a cancel for any reason is 75% refund. So even if you had cancel for any reason insurance, depending on which insurance carrier, depending on what supplier we were using, you were getting the maximum of 75% back, or in most cases, and especially now. So we've had one insurance agency that used to offer or one insurance company that used to offer 75% cancel for any reason, they've now, after this pandemic, have gone to 50%. So they no longer offer a product uh, to get 75% back. So our job, again, is to try to advise and guide you on what are the hotel cancel policies. Most hotels, resorts are very, very, being very lenient right now. Um, so we are very confident that we can book your hotel room, as you'll see here, most cases, it's a 20 per person deposit, which is still fully refundable. And even after final payment, which in many cases is now 30 days instead of 40 days, because, um, you know, again, these companies know you don't want to make a, full, a large payment 45 days in advance. They're trying to squeeze that till right before your trip. But even after final payment, there are still many cases where it's still fully refundable. So Anjali and I know those policies. We're not booking anything that's non-refundable or that you can't get your money back like almost up until a week prior. Um, so we have no problem saying, book your hotel room, put the $20 per person down. It's basically, it's, you're not losing anything at all. Um, and then we'll discuss insurance with you as far as air. In many cases, um, like for example, American Airlines, they're waiving their change and cancel fees right now up through June 30th. 
So I've advised some of my clients that are looking at traveling later this year that, that are not using Southwest, which we all know doesn't have change and cancel fees anyway, that most of the carriers are basically acting the same way as Southwest. So you book your tickets, they're 500 a piece. Um, we get to October, you don't feel comfortable going they're basically waiving their change and cancel fees with, you know, American, that's normally a $200 per person or more um, change or cancel fee. They're basically just saying, okay, you have $500 per person to use up through. And in many cases, it's either December 31, 2021 or into 2022. So the, the airlines are being super lenient right now. Um, so again, if, if they cancel your flight, if we get to October and there's an issue and they cancel your flight or they, uh, they have a major schedule change, then you can be eligible to get your money back on your credit card. If you decide you're not gonna fly just because you're nervous or whatever, you still now have the peace of mind that, okay, I'm not gonna pay a cancel fee of 200 per person like I normally would it's gonna sit as a voucher that I can use, you know, through 2021 into 2022. So again, every airline carrier is different with how long you have to use the voucher, when that change and cancel policy ends, um, and we're monitoring that. So I'm not opposed personally, especially if prices are good, to bundling the air on right now because Again, you're not really losing anything. The, the worst case scenario is you're going to have a voucher for the exact amount that you paid for your air. Right. So we have a quick question coming in um, off of that is, do you see resort prices rising or falling? Rising because of extra cleanliness procedures or falling due to the decrease in demand? Oh, that's a great question. I will tell you this. Um, for the fall, we've seen great pricing because they're, they're, they're desperate to get people back. So if you feel comfortable traveling, not, not at Christmas time. Again, I've, I've booked Christmas. Christmas is what, or holiday time is what holiday time is. It, it, it was already, people book that and Thanksgiving a year in advance as it is. So in 2019, you know, people were already booking for 2020 for holiday time. People who kind of know this, already know they got to book a year in advance. So you already have all your people that booked in advance for holiday time on top of now all the rescheduled spring break um, Christmas trips, uh, spring break summer trips that were canceled. So no, it, it take holiday time out of it. If you're just talking about 2020 fall, then yeah, we've seen some really nice uh, rates for 2020. 2021, not really. I have to say it's not People think that it's gonna be this deal of the century, but like I said, people want to travel. They're itching to get out. So the resorts are banking on it, that they're gonna be full next year. Um, what I have seen is some really, 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 really good air pricing. Um, Cause again, I'm dealing with, with groups, uh, destination weddings for 2021. And I mean the air uh, from, where are they leaving? JFK to Cancun nonstop. It's like 350 a person. I mean, it's incredible for next May. So I'm seeing some great pricing on air right now. Um, I can't say that uh, any of the things that I've booked in 2021 have been like bargain basement pricing. Um, and I was going to follow up with that too. Anything I'm looking for spring break of 2021. And I think clients are looking that, oh, I'm going to get a fantastic deal. I said, you can get a fantastic deal on air, but you're not getting it on the property because they already have some people that have already started booking that. Yep. And I think that you're right. It's going to just continue to book up at their regular rates. Yeah. For 2021. Yeah. We're, we're, we're basically normally with our suppliers, because again, Anjali and I, we don't necessarily work directly with the hotel. We work with suppliers that just, just as if you were to go on one of those online companies to look for a lower rate, we as agents uh, in the agency community have suppliers that have contracted rates. So again, normally you're getting it the same or less than what you're seeing online. Um, and our suppliers normally get the contracts a year in advance. So like Anjali saying, I had a bunch of spring break trips for this year um 
to the to the beaches and sandals brands, I was able to just rebook them. So they didn't cancel when they couldn't go this year. We literally just took their trip and and moved it. So uh, for next spring break. So yeah, spring break time again. Any any holiday sort of time, you're not going to see great rates. Um, it would be again off season for us, which we've said there, even when it's not COVID. Anything in May is nice. It's sort of a, it's after spring break, but it's before summer travel. And then things this year, there are some brands giving some incredible, incredible pricing for 2020. Um, so if you're, you know, if you feel pretty comfortable, expect, you know, after hearing us and, you know, it, it's definitely the time to take advantage of that. Um, and I think that's, so that's, that's pretty much it on there. Okay, we, that went for a really long time. I think <laughs> we talked way too much. Are there any other questions out there? Or are we good to go? I think we're good. I don't see any more coming in. Nobody has texted any of um, additional questions. So I think, uh, wait, hold on, one just came in. Let me see. Um, what island would you recommend first to visit? Oh my. With the current restrictions. That's a, oh, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, an island is not going to be Cancun, but uh, again, Cancun, they've, they've opened. We've seen videos. Things are looking good there. So for a sure thing, it's going to be Cancun, Riviera Maya. Um, I think Jamaica is on the right track with what they're doing. They seem really confident and have really good protocols in place. I would say Jamaica. I think at this point, like I said, here I thought Bahamas was going to be a no-brainer. That's not looking good because some of these resorts aren't opening. Dominican is, is iffy. Antigua is looking really good. But again, it depends on, is it a family trip? Because if it's a family trip, then there's only so many places in Antigua that I would even recommend. If it's a couple's trip, then yeah, there's some incredible, incredible resorts in, in Antigua. So again, that's where you really have to reach out to us and say, here's, here's the family dynamic, who's, here's who's going, what do you recommend? Um, I, I think, again, Grand Cayman's out. I think even Aruba at this point, I, I, you know, they're, they're looking good, but until they open, it's hard for me to even um, say that. So, again, I, that's Cancun, Riviera Maya, and some people are so turned off by Mexico. I, I absolutely love it. I think the service is great. I've never felt unsafe. I love the food. I mean, I'll talk Cancun, Riviera Maya all day long. I think there's some incredible resorts there. So for pretty much a sure thing, um, they're the first ones that are now open and are opening and functioning and things are looking really good to us from what the, the videos are. And I was going to say, based on um, other uh, clients that are there and the videos that we're getting of actual yeah. live clients that are going, it's not just yeah. pictures, it's actual video coming in. Yeah, definitely in Mexico is sh is showing to be the most promising right now. Yeah, yep. So again, that's something. Reach out to us. It, you know, we need to know when you're you're thinking about traveling. I mean, is it a family? Is it just a couple's trip? Um, and then we can we can go from there and advise on the on the best on the best island. Okay, so far I think that's it. Okay, and there we are. If you, I'm sure you probably already follow us on Facebook, uh, but if not, please do. And Instagram, we always put fun pictures there. And Pinterest, that's our, again, our marketing guru, Ellen, is working on making our Pinterest page even better. Um, so again, we, we want to thank you for your time. I hope, hopefully, we didn't talk too much and you got some of your questions answered. Um, and again, reach out to us if you have any other specific questions, uh, hopefully we can answer them for you. And maybe we'll do this again in another month and we'll have, you know, uh, or, or August 1st. And we'll then really most of the island should be open so we can maybe run through this again. So thank you, everybody. We made it through the slideshow. Bye. No issues. Yes. Bye. Thank, thank you. you.